Oh, hello! My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So, today I am completing my trifecta of hypage because I am going to be talking about underhyped books. So, uh, we've discussed books that I think are overhyped, we've discussed books that I think were just like hyped, so like they were hyped and they lived up to that hype. And today we are going to talk about books that I think are underhyped. And this is one where I particularly feel the need to just like give the caveat of I am talking about underhyped for me. So like this isn't necessarily that these books are not talked about. Obvi like none of these are like obscure indie press books that like never saw the light of day. Do you know what I mean? Just the fact that these are like major releases from publishers means that they like got some level of attention. And I'm also talking about like there's kind of two senses in which I am going to talk about this. One is underhyped relative to how good I think the book is. So even if it gets attention, I just think it deserves more. Or underhyped, like, relative to books similar to it, books that, like, it surprises me that more people don't talk about or I think are, like, better than a similar book kind of thing. Um, and, you know, as always, this is just, like, based on what I see on the bookish internet, basically, like, my experience of the way people talk about these books. I think that, especially for some of these, it will vary community to community. And, you know, if you are very into, like, fantasy, maybe this doesn't feel like an underhyped book to you, but I would say, like, it surprises me that this hasn't, like, broken out of that community, things like that. So, um, you know, again, much like uh, 10 Things I Hate About You, we know that you can be overhyped, you can be hyped, but we think that you can also be underhyped, at least in Europe. So let's <laughs> let's just dive on in. And again, I kind of just took the approach of, like, went through my shelves, grabbed books that I felt like, oh yeah, I think that that's kind of underhyped. So let's dive in. Okay, we're going to start with two where I don't think like, so these are authors that are very well known. And one of these is always like, it's a series that was a bestseller. But I think both of these are just so good that I don't, I think that they deserve more hype. Like, I just think that th this is the case to me that I'm like, why isn't everybody talking about this in every video? So the first is Kate Daniels from Alone Andrews. These are bestsellers. So like total caveat here that like clearly this has found an audience that really loves them, me included. Um, but I just, I don't understand why more people don't read and talk about these books because I just love this series. I love Alona Andrews. Like why doesn't everybody just love the shit out of these <laughs> And I do is basically to me like I don't think that these can be overhyped and then I say that and I'm like oh now I've oversold these to people who haven't read them yet so it's a hard balance um but you know I definitely am very proselytizing for this particular series so I just wanted to throw it in that like there is no overhyping this series to me. And then the other one um that this author Roxane Gay is clearly very well known very hyped but I think her short stories maybe are underhyped, or at least this particular collection, Aiedi. I just feel like this is so good. This is my favorite book of 2018. I absolutely love this. And like, I feel like the people who read it agreed with me. And so it just surprises me. I don't know, like I her, her nonfiction, her sort of presence as a public figure and a public thinker is so established that I, you know, I, I've heard hype for her fiction, particularly for her novel. But I know people have like a mixed response to her Difficult Women uh, collection, which I'm going to read this year. And then this collection is so good. It just surprises me that it's not more talked about when talking about how awesome Roxane Gay is. So these are two that I think are sort of like just relative to how much I love them. They feel underhyped, but maybe objectively are not. And then I picked three books that I feel like they have a similar book that is very hyped these days, but they themselves maybe are not as hyped. And I think they deserve to be as if not more hyped. So the first is the Remains of the Day by Kaza Ishiguru. The Remains of the Day is my second all-time favorite book behind Jane Eyre. I absolutely love this. And here on booktube, there's a lot of love for Never Let Me Go by Kaza Ishiguru, which I understand because I absolutely love that book as well. Like, I'm not saying that that's not a great book, but this is his masterpiece. Like, this book is so good. And I think because it's more historical fiction rather than sort of like uh, genre fiction, maybe that's why it doesn't get as much attention. I don't know. But this book is 
so so good and I just love it and I think I wish more people would read beyond just never let me go basically is what I'm getting at um and then another one is Eloquent Rage by Brittany Cooper this is one that definitely in a certain circle has gotten a lot of attention but I think that this in terms of like it's a black feminist discovers her superpower like it's a memoir about the black female experience and I wish that this was as hyped as Between the World and Me which I feel like is a very hyped and beloved memoir by ta Coates about the black male experience um so I just to me this is sort of like the best of its kind and I wish it just got more attention um especially like kind of the the intersectionality of being a woman and being black and how um, I think a lot of times black women are put in a position of having to placate kind of both parties within that identity um, in terms of like other black people or other women and anyway so I just think that this book deserves more love more hype as much as between the world and me and then the library at mount char by scott hawkins you guys have definitely heard me talk about this book a lot but particularly recently with how much um attention and hype middle game by shauna mcguire has been getting i would just tell you maybe if you're like this is just better this is such a, there's such similar books in a lot of ways and i think that this is just better in every respect at least for me like that is just my that's my opinion um but anyway so this is more brutal i think it's probably more maybe more disturbing i'm not sure they're both very violent and pretty disturbing but i just think that they have very similar projects and i just think that this executes on it way better so those are three that kind of one-to-one -one with other books i think are underhyped and then i've got five that are just sort of like I think that they have, they definitely have their audience. Again, these are pub, like mainstream published. I have seen these around. It's not like these are utterly obscure titles, but I just don't feel like they get like as remembered or mentioned or whatever as they should, just because like, I think these are all really, really good books of their kind. So first, Johannes Cabal, The Detective by Jonathan L. Howard. Um, I would say actually this and then the next one I'm going to talk about probably I could have put in as like if you like V.E. Schwab and what she does in certain ways I think the next two but this and the next one both could kind of uh, scratch a similar itch this one in particular so this is like steampunk uh, genre fiction so like it's a steampunky kind of world and then each book has a different sort of uh, genre twist to it. So this one is a detective story set on a dirigible in a steampunk world and it's just really funny, light, enjoyable. I just think that this is really superb. I, I love this book and I it surprises me that more people don't really love this series. Now granted I think I've read three of them, there's five, but I don't know. This one in particular I just think is really underhyped. It's really really good. I recommend it. And then um in a kind and just in the sense of like alternative uh, history, specifically alternative, like an alternative steampunky version of London. The Iron Duke series by Mel Jean Brooke, I think could please a lot of V.E. Schwab fans potentially if you're down with there being like more overt romances. This is the fourth one, The Kraken King, and I think this one is probably the best one. Um, but all four of these books are <clears throat> really, really good. I really, Mel Jean Brooke has a really f interesting world she's built where essentially there's like um, a zombie apocalypse and uh, it's an alternative history where like the Mongolian Empire took over a good chunk of the globe as kind of a result of that. And like like kind of like Genghis Khan. It's a it's a history where Genghis Khan really did rule the world basically. Um <clears throat> so it's set mostly in London, but there's a lot of travel like globally with these. Anyway, these are just really fun books and if you're down with like a pretty, you know, specific romantic element in them, they're really good uh steampunk alternative history fantasy type books. Two underhyped YAs and actually I just realized all three of these last books the theme could definitely be uh misogyny and violence is <laughs> sort of the thematic content, but the Natural Series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes is the best YA mystery series I have ever read. I absolutely love this. It's YA criminal minds, basically. And it's just really well executed, I think. These are really good uh, sort of serial killer mystery plots. There's four books and then a really good little ending novella. I wish she would write more of these when they're adults. I would love that. Or like new adults, right? Like a new adult quartet, Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Help a girl out. Okay. Anyway, these, I think these definitely get talked about, but like, 
don't forget them just because they're a little older. They're very, very good. And um, I just wish people would remember them more. I don't know. Anytime a, like a YA mystery gets hype, I'm like, it's not as good as the naturals. So I don't know. I just feel like these are just really great. Um, and then these last two books are incredibly thematically similar. And both of them, I think, well, this one more so had a moment. But um, both of these are about like the relationship between misogyny and violence very overtly. They're both literary fiction. This is YA literary fiction. This is adult literary fiction. And A Heart and a Body in the World by Deb Coletti came out last year. And I definitely saw people talking about it, but I really feel like it fell off. And I don't know why, because this book is superlative. It is some of the best YA I have ever read. I highly, highly recommend this book if you can deal with it. I mean, it is, it will make you cry. It made me, it made me cry in my year in wrap up because I had freshly read it and I couldn't talk about it without crying. It is so good. And I just feel like, People talked about it and then it just sort of went away and I don't know why. I feel like it's just excellent. Um, and then this book, I think this is probably the least hyped of anything on here because I just didn't see people talking about this when it came out. And that really made me sad because I think that this is a really, it's got very dark humor. So I wonder if that's part of it, but it's about a, a school shooting and a teacher who is briefly suspected of it and basically how like that ruins her life or like sends her sort of in a tailspin. It is so, so good. I love this book so much. Um, and I just really wish that it had gotten and found more of an audience. But if you're looking for literary fiction that it does definitely have a lot of dark humor, but um, it has a really interesting sort of like beat to it, like has a very interesting rhythm. I don't know, I have an entire review of this. So I guess I could link that somewhere. But I just think this is really good. And it didn't find its audience. And that kind of bums me out because I, I think that this deserved a lot more hype. Okay, so those are 10 books that I think are underhyped, at least for me, or I just don't think get as much love as they deserve because I think so highly of them. Um, so yeah, those are just sort of some of my thoughts. I'm sure that in the future I may do more of these types of videos about hypage relative to books, but I think that that will conclude this little trilogy of videos for now. Um, but definitely let me know in the comments a book that you think is really underhyped and deserves more love. I uh, always love to see, you know, underdogs kind of shouted out a little bit. And yeah, I think that that will do it. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you guys are having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!